Hello Legion, this is Hadrian. Thank you for being here. Let's play some more of The Long Dark in our Survival School series. So believe it or not, we are at the very beginning of a new day here. It looks dark as hell, but there is a window right in front of me. And um, I could probably rest for an hour and wait for, you know, the sun to kind of come up. But what I'm going to do is just uh, drink a little bit. Oh, wow. I need more water. Where did my water go? Evidently, I drank it all. So we'll make more water this episode. I want to touch on a few things in review of some of the topics that kind of came up in the uh, in the previous episodes, particularly episode, the last one, because I mentioned that I would think more about uh, inventory management and how much you carry of given things and just, you know, kind of think about it a little bit more and comment more. But also some good comments got left by folks um, that were... <sighs> Dang it, hang on. Trying to make a note of something, and my pen randomly has no ink. Sorry. Um, trying to... Uh, there, there were some folks who left some really good comments. That completely threw me off. My apologies. Um, folks left some really good comments that I want to comment on as well. So, uh, first thing, as far as, like, what to have on you, and what the real answer is to the question of how much should you carry at any given time, what's really necessary to survive, there is one thing that's very specific and you almost always, especially on high difficulty levels, want to have this specific amount on you. And the answer is, if I haven't said this earlier in the series, even if I have, I'll say it again. The answer is 15 sticks and five cloth. If you don't have 15 sticks on you, at least have 10, like a minimum of 10 to where you say to yourself, all I need is five. Use that as like a flex policy if you want. Oh good, the fog cleared in between me uh, talking about that. So it looks a little bit better. And now it's dawn. Very nice. Um, but yes, the reason you need that is so that you can craft this baby. This requires 15 sticks and 5 cloth to build. Now, we haven't built one yet in the series, but I will be showing you that in the next episode or two. Um, but I wanted to go ahead and cover that because that, that is a huge thing that you need to almost always have on you, especially if you are at all nervous about getting too cold or a blizzard or anything like that. So let that be kind of at the top of your list. And what, by the way, is weighing me down? I don't remember what I'm carrying that's heavy. I've got some firewood. That's what it is. Well, I need water, so I may as well light a fire really quickly and get that water. And then what we're going to do this episode, we've got our deerskin pants, which we got at the end of the last episode, which is nice. So we are in better shape clothing-wise than we have been for the entire time. And like I said, I have a few of the topics that I want to review. But then we are going to spend the rest of this episode talking about we're going to go around uh, back to the the camp office for a bit so i can demonstrate a few things and we're going to talk about a particular play style which is hunkering down if you want to call it that there's not really a a specific name for it in the community really i mean some people might say hunkering down some some people might say settling down where the hell is the stove seriously i've been feeling around in the dark for the stove for there you are okay good lord sorry Eventually, I just lost patience. Wood matches, cat head, book, good. Start fire. So yeah, we're going to talk about, in this episode, about specifically what it takes to settle down in one particular place in the long dark. If you don't want to be nomadic, what do you need? What should you look for? What should be near you? What should be in your base? What are the essentials? So we're going to talk about that in just a second once I've got some water. Another thing that I want to talk about that kind of got commented on in some previous episodes, I think two episodes ago we talked about... Um, Unlisted skills. So we talked about um, skills that are not in the journal. And someone actually asked uh, about repair skill versus mending skill. Are they the same? And the answer is no. Mending, the skill that is in the journal, refers to mending clothing, which is why the icon is a spool of cloth. Um, or of of yarn or string. Or, it's, it's a spool. So the, the point is there is a separate skill. In the long dark for i guess i'll go ahead and put some wood on this too sorry multitasking there's a separate skill in the long dark go ahead and do both because i need to get rid of the wood anyway for repairing items so if you repair say you can't repair a fire striker you can't re repair a pry, a pry bar but if you were to repair a hacksaw um because you don't sharpen a hacksaw you repair a hacksaw i believe um Let's actually see if I have one on me, because that would be a good thing to show. Because you sharpen a knife. Yeah, you can repair things like can openers. This is at 66% right now. If you want to make sure you don't lose your can opener, you use scrap metal, you can repair it. Now this, again, counts on repair skill, which is not 
listed, but it does show you right here how much you're going to repair based on your current repair skill, how long it's going to take. And generally, your chance of success, your repair amount, and your time for repair will change in the same way that other skills are affected. It's just not listed yet. So be aware of that. They're not the same skill, and they are quite separate. I appreciate uh, that commenter for bringing that particular thing up. How much water did I just boil? That's what I thought. So ironically, we just got rid of that wood, right? But because I am boiling this much water, it's very likely that I'm still going to be encumbered when I leave. That's life. And there is one more thing I want to do before I leave here. So let's see about it. Let me double check what I am carrying. Yeah, see, I don't need any of those stacks of papers. I can break them down to tinder plugs now if I want it, but I'm not even going to worry about that. Yeah, we've got some extra clothing items on us. Let me go ahead and harvest this. Again, the two toques that I'm wearing are better than any scarf that I could put on my head, so I'm harvesting the scarf as well because those go in the same slot. And then we have some jeans that I'm not going to wear anymore. So I'm going to harvest those. You could keep them if you wanted, but I would rather have the cloth, frankly. And that is it for clothing. I am carrying four stones. That's two pounds of stones. And some charcoal. I could probably drop the charcoal, but I think I'd rather just drop the rocks outside. So I'll do that. And I do have some scrap metal on me, which... Scrap metal you should almost always never be carrying around with you. You should have a place, you want to talk about inventory management, you should have a place where you put your scrap metal, I'm going to put mine in this locker, and that's where the scrap metal goes. And you save the scrap metal for when you need to actually forge something or take it to the forge. And one of the forges in the game, I'm not going to tell you which one, but one of the forges in the game has ample sources of metal right by it. And there's a fair amount near the other one too, but the point is you, you can... You don't want to have scrap metal just on you. That's something you should never, ever, ever, ever be lugging around. Because it's heavy. It's metal. You're literally lugging around scrap metal. Don't do it. General rule of thumb. <laughs> so, let's see what else we've got here. What else is weighing me down? It's really the water, I suppose. And the books. Simple toolkit's weighing me down. I could put that down if I wanted to. Or I could put the jerry can down. Yeah, let's put the jerry can down. Jerry cans are another example of something that you really shouldn't have on you unless you absolutely need it. If I was taking the fuel, for instance, to another space. There we go. Alright, so now we're a little bit lighter. I'm well fed, I'm well rested. Not particularly thirsty. Weather outside seems to be good. Oh, just kidding. Weather's terrible. Doesn't take long in the lawn dark. So, as I said, there's one more thing I would like to do. And I don't want to spend a ton of time doing it. Aw, did our... Did our woodland friends leave? There were bunches of you out here not too long ago. There were entire bunches of you. There were like three and four of you, but you apparently migrated. Alright, never mind. We aren't going to kill a bunch of deer at the beginning of this episode because they're not there anymore. That's a shame. Obviously, wildlife do move around. You can't always count on them, whether they're hostile or not, um, to be in the same spot. I guess what we'll do is we'll go check on that bear corcus <laughs> um, and see what's there. But in the meantime, I will go ahead and start talking about hunkering down by saying this. And I've kind of touched on it before. But just as an introduction to the discussion of if you want to be more sedentary, as the saying or as, as the word goes, and you want to stay in one spot and let that be your spot for the long dark, then what you need to do, I'm actually going to go over here and check for a hatchet really fast, but um, what you need to do is be ready first and foremost. You want to make sure that your clothing is adequate enough so that any animal skins you craft will make you more than warm enough 
once you have the animal skins, if you don't already have the animal skins when you start to hunker down. You want to make sure that you have the tools that you need to live effectively off of the items that you find. So um, if you have a bunch of canned food in your base that you've brought a bunch of supplies to, whoa, what's going on with the shadow there? What is, what is happening? I've never seen that before. What's going on? Is it a... I'm so confused. Oh, that's so trippy. I've never seen this before in the Lawn Dark. I think that's just a shadow of like a mountaintop, but because of the way the light is... Sorry, complete distraction. And see, here's that hatchet. I told you I saw it. I told you it was here. So there's another hatchet. Speaking of that, you know, do you have the tools that you need? Oh, good. We got a hoodie. We finally have a proper... Uh, oh, wait, that's actually an interior item, I thought. That's right. Hoodies are worn on the inside. Well, I'll repair that and figure out if it might be better than what I'm wearing. I doubt it will be. But, um... So, tools, clothing, essentials. The stuff we've talked about already. Do you have what you're going to need? Do you have enough matches? Do you have a fire striker that will light all the fires that you want to light? One of the questions that came up in the comments is, what do you do when you run out of matches? And you don't have a fire striker anymore? What, what, what happens at that point? Um, my answer sincerely to this commenter was, uh, you cry. Deeply. Like, like you're, at, at the point that you run out of matches in the long dark, and you don't have a fire striker, unless you are confident that you haven't fully explored the world and you will find more, if you've been everywhere and picked up everything you possibly can, and all your matches are gone, and your fire striker is gone, in the current version of the Lawn Dark, February 2018, you're screwed. Your game's over. Because you can't light a fire without a fire striker or matches. In future versions of the game, and I am inclined to think maybe this year, I don't have any inside information, I'm just saying my instincts from following Hinderlin for a while tell me that this is something they want to add sooner than later based on their design philosophies and what's important to them about the survival simulation. I think they're going to add fire bows and things that you can use to, to spark fires um, in the wild when you don't have one of those man-made tools. Because I think that's one of the essentials, survival essentials, that's currently missing from the Lawn Dark. So I would not be surprised to see that added in, if not the next patch, um, one of the patches that comes out this year. Wouldn't be surprised. But again, don't have any inside information whatsoever. I just know that they've mentioned that. And that's a more practical addition to the game that I think would be quite sensible for them to um, for them to include. I'm going to put this hatchet down in here. So yeah, you when you're starting to hunker down, whether you're in a location like this or the camp office, which we're going to, which we're going to go back to in just a second, your objective should really be... Let's see, we've got that about cured. Very good. That's cured. Your, your objective should really be to let's drop the lesser condition hatchet. First and foremost, make sure that you're ready. I'm going to go ahead and sharpen the tools that I have. There's all this talk about sharpening and um, skills that aren't listed. See sharpening skill increase to 31. There's no skill indicator over here on the right. It's not a journal skill. So that's how you can tell that it's slightly different than the others that I've been telling you about. So once I get over to the Mystery Lake Cabin, we'll talk more about what you actually need in order to really settle down and be in one place for the long haul. I'll go ahead and tell you, you guys uh, who have been on the channel for a while, you've watched me play a lot of long-term games. Um, I don't I don't particularly settle down even when I am playing for the long haul. I find Long Dark the most entertaining when you're moving. But that's me. A lot of people prefer a different approach. Or like the idea of... I mean, for a lot of people, survival in an environment like this means being able to live in one place without needing to move around. Because it's more of a normal lifestyle, right? you feel secure enough that you can stay where you are and be content. And that is success. And that makes sense psychologically that people would seek satisfaction from a survival simulation in that way. So that's why I want to talk about 
the idea of hunkering down and what you need in order to do that, even though that's not my personal style. All right, good news is when I'm done doing this, all right, good. Those tools are both fully sharpened. I can also go ahead and I'm gonna drink this Stacy's Grape Soda first. When you're thirsty and hungry, always drink your sodas first before you drink any water because sodas are so heavy and it's good to get them out of your inventory before you fill your thirst meter up to the brim by drinking water. So just remember that. Make a mental note. Again, the reason the meat is sitting out in the snow is because it stays fresh when it's out here. Okay, that actually didn't fully consume the meat. But I can still carry that other steak around. It might attract some attention, but that's okay. No deer. All right, well, let's head back towards the camp office. Really quiet day. Weather's being fairly gentle at the moment, but I'm going to guess some snow will be falling. If I know Mystery Lake's patterns, I'm going to guess some snow will be falling by the time we get to the camp office. And the camp office is maybe a five minute walk from where we are right now. The way I'm taking right now, especially. I would guess from what I'm seeing right now that we're going to have snow in a bit. Again, weather patterns in the long dark are zone specific. They are learnable. It's meant for you to be that way. It's meant to be that way so that you can learn kind of what one transition means. See, there's a deer down there. I want to go kill that deer, but that's out of my way. I want to kill deer that are on my way, not out of my way. Actually, pretty tired at this point. It's all that sharpening, I guess. All right, I see some uh, old man's beard down there. Just a quick reminder that whenever you're out walking in the wilderness, that's when to really keep your head on the swivel for any kind of uh, harvestables, especially saplings, especially the rare saplings, because those are always kind of off the beaten path. Hey, bunnies. Also, speaking of Old Man's Beard wound dressing, a commenter pointed out something that I had not observed, or if I had observed it, it had been long enough that I'd completely forgotten it. Uh, last episode, I went ahead and made that Old Man's Beard wound dressing, right? With the, with the, with this stuff. And it actually turns out, actually I'll show you, now that we're getting more. So right now, we're carrying 65.6 pounds. If I go to my crafting... And I make that. Notice that our weight actually went up by 0.16 pounds. <laughs> so it's not a huge amount, but... The old man's beard wound dressing is actually heavier than the three old man's beard. Otherwise, so it's that's that's really not a tremendous difference. But as that commenter pointed out, it's worth noting, and I appreciate that uh, point being brought up because you know we talked about rose hips earlier in the series. How when you prepare those, you know the mountain of rose hips you have in your inventory will actually become lighter once they're prepared for tea. And I just saw a snowflake. And there they are. What did I tell you? What I wasn't expecting was the wind. And I see the train tracks. Okay, I've actually popped out near an area where wolves may be patrolling.
There's one right there, actually. So, I guess one thing I can talk about that I haven't talked about yet, because we've only had the rifle since we went to the cabin and we haven't been anywhere. What happens when you've got the rifle and you find yourself dealing with a hostile furry woodland friend with black fur coming right at you? What do you do? What's a good way to kill one relatively quickly? Well, I have one particular method that I use and I have used for all time that I think is particularly good. You have to be a fairly confident first-person shooter player in order to do this. And I've mentioned that this game is not a first-person shooter. It's a, it's a survival simulator. It just happens to have a gun that you, that you can fire. Um, and it's first-person, but it's not really considered a first-person shooter. Um, and the mechanics are much more challenging than the typical first-person shooter as far as successfully scoring a hit. So I don't mean to invoke that comparison too strongly. But you do have to have some basic skill with pointing in a game and shooting. Um, more accurately, you need to have some basic twitch reflexes in order to do this. You don't need to have super refi refined twitch reflexes, and if you don't know what I mean by twitch reflexes, I re I'm referring to the ability to quickly point accurately in a direction and push a button. In other words, aim and shoot in an instant. That's a twitch reflex. And you kind of need that. You, ha you have a little bit more time. It's not as much a twitch, this method I'm about to show you, but I'm going to piss off this wolf. I want to show you how you can take him down. Now, we're a little tired, so this might not work, but I'm still going to try it. Those of you who have watched my content before, you are well aware of what's about to happen. Okay. Did that come from another direction, or did he turn around and come at me? Seriously, where'd that... Okay, there he is. I didn't see him coming for me, so I was like, wait a minute. Is that a different wolf? That's what you got to be sure of, too, when you're in a situation like this. First of all, whether you're carrying a bow and arrow or carrying a rifle, you should know that the moment you raise the weapon, the wolf will charge. That's one thing I'll tell you right now. See? I just started to lift it, and he's running. And that's how you do it. If you're not afraid to anger a wolf, and if you're not playing on a difficulty where you're worried that the wolf attack will kill you, then just do what I just did. Aggro the wolf, draw its attention, get it to come towards you, Get on some flat ground, get low, so crouch, hit control. And you'll notice actually when he was charging, I actually lowered the rifle gun and put it back up. That's just to make sure the sway was minimal. The longer you hold up the rifle, the more it's going to sway. So I just want to make sure I shot true. So I lowered it for a bit and then put it right back up, had him right in my sights, and I pulled the trigger right when he got close. The reason I wait for them to get close is obvious. I mean, they, they present a larger profile the closer they are. And also they're coming right at you. The only caveat is that more recent versions of the Long Dark, they, they used to always come straight at you. It was very easy to kill them this way. Now they have learned to zigzag. They've learned to come at you at an angle. And it can be unpredictable sometimes. They may very well um, come at you in a way that uh, is, is a lot harder to track. So again, twitch reflexes, right? But as long as you've got a wolf coming right at you like that, all you have to do is raise the rifle and shoot. Again, you want to make sure that you have the reticle lined up like so. And I'm pretty tired right now, so the, the rifle is swaying considerably. But I'm going to go ahead and... Uh, I'm, I don't think I'm going to worry about the guts, because I've got plenty of guts back at the, at the place. But I will take the hide. It's going to take 30 minutes, and storm's coming, so it might be a bit of a blizzard soon. All right, we totally just took that skin, even though the wolf doesn't look skinned. All right, so now we're at the camp office. Let's talk a little bit more before I end the episode about what it means to hunker down. What do you really need? So I've got a list of four things that I think are pretty much essential, and then two things that are ideal. So there are four things that are essential and two things that are ideal. And then, of course, I encourage all of you, there's another wolf down there, I encourage all of you to check the comments and see if there are any additional suggestions from viewers. The very first thing is you just want a variety of, foods, of food sources. You want to be somewhere where you can, uh, usually what comes to mind when I say this, and people have already said this in the comments, is fishing. You want to make sure that you can fish wherever you are. That's obviously very important. Let's drop that uh, wolf skin while I'm thinking about it. Oh, that's actually carrying some, some moose meat. I'm surprised he didn't uh, chase me more. 
or chase me sooner. So yeah, a variety of sources of food. But in addition to just fish, you want to be in a place where you're relatively confident that you uh, will have some deer near you. Um, do you seem to, have you noticed deer in the area before? Might they wander through? You know, the trapper's cabin is a great example of that. Also, uh, bunnies. If you're near a rabbit grove, um, that's a place where it's you know going to be fairly easy to get some food. Not necessarily infinite food. Um, and of course, no source of, of food in the long dark is infinite. Uh, animals will respawn eventually, but their spawn rate goes further and further down the longer the game is going. So you want to generally know from experience where the places are that these animals are going to be most often, where they seem to be most prevalent, and kind of hunker down there. Obviously, on the flip side of the same point, you want to make sure you're not in a place that's surrounded by wolves. There are certain, certain places in Coastal Highway that are wonderful bases but are fairly ridden with wolves and so you have to kind of make a trade-off there um so that's the number one thing the second thing that's essential is this obviously you need a workbench anywhere you're going to settle down for a long time this is what you're going to use to craft a lot of these you know more complex items and also really importantly make additional fishing line uh tools you can make fishing line by handcrafting but as far as the essential components the scrap metal and the line you need a, a workbench in order to make that, so you need a workbench. Third, you want to be near an area where fallen limbs are going to be pretty common. So anytime there's a storm, you want to be able to step right outside to a place like this and grab a limb off the ground. So it involves a little bit of... See, there's a limb right there. It involves just a little bit of um, familiarity with an area, kind of keeping your eyes open when you are picking a place to stay and thinking, okay, um, where? what's a reasonable place you know, for me to to settle down and is there going to be enough firewood for me to be able to go out and just get this stuff anytime there's a storm sure if you're in a lightly wooded area it's going to be a little bit tougher so want to make you want to make sure you're somewhat near a thicker wood and then finally i think and this is this is just a general geographical thing you should pick a centralized location you want to pick a place and we're actually in a place that's that's i won't tell you why but we're in a place that's that's like that right now this is a good I would say this is a good central location. And to an extent, the Trapper's Cabin is too. Trapper's Cabin is a little bit more isolated. But you don't want to be isolated. For a couple of reasons. Number one, you want to be able to easily leave... Excuse me, for other locations when you need to. Um, but also, the Long Dark is a pretty good psychological simulator, honestly. Like, I'm, I know it's just a game, but... It's probably good if you're playing the game for the long term, for your own sense of enjoyment and sense of experience, it's probably good that you are able to easily get a sense of going and being able to see the scenery, so to speak. You want to be able to easily strike out and explore and go to other places from where you are. So setting up shop at like the far end of the map, where you're in one corner of the map, and all the other zones are spread out in a 180 degree angle in front of you, but nothing behind you, and maybe you're even in a corner to where it's just like a 90 degree in front of you, if, if you follow what I'm saying. Like, if you put both of your arms out at an angle right now, all of you do this, just put both of your arms out, you know, not straight out, but like halfway forward and then halfway to the side. So you've got a 90 degree angle right between your arms. If that's where everything is in front of you in your base and there's nothing behind you and nothing even at your sides and you have maximum distance to the far end of the map, uh, whereas, whereas what you could do is pick a central location that's kind of would give you half of that distance to anywhere on the map, which are you going to choose? You know, you, you kind of want to be in a place where you can get anywhere pretty easily. So once you've taken the time to learn where the different places um, and and transition zones and and zones in general are in the long dark, make a really good decision about where you want. Oh wow! Look at this sunset and fog. This is another first. I've I've never seen this combination of of lighting. That's why it's just in the middle of a transition. It's crazy. Thick fog. Holy crap. That's cool. But um, that's very that's a very rare weather appearance there. I've, I'm not kidding. I've never seen a foggy sunset quite like that. So anyway, those are just some basics. And then the two essentials, I'll go ahead and list them really quickly and then we'll stop because we're about 30 minutes in. The two essentials are you want to have a place where you can go get metal. Just find a place where, where there's plenty of metal, where there's metal um, shelves that can be broken down. And then finally, ideally, not essentially, but ideally, you want to be near one of the forges and there's two forges in the world so once you learn where those are maybe make sure your base is within striking distance of a forge to where if you know you need to make a tool it's not that far from you 
So just something to think about. Anyway, I will go ahead and stop this episode here. In the next one, we're going to keep talking about any topics you request and or other play styles as well. And we're going to get towards more advanced stuff towards the end. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to like the video and subscribe to follow along. New episodes are coming out every day at 3 p.m. Eastern time, except when I randomly have friends over for lunch and they are here for a while and I don't record when I mean to. So yeah, there's that. <laughs> but comments are always welcome. Let me know what you think. And I'll see you next time.